So why are they so conditioned and hold on to this past memory of the suffering, the misery, the remorse and all those things? And this is what the brain, when you accumulate, create. That's why in Mahayana, the second noble truth is not the cause of arising or suffering. You know what the second noble truth is in Mandarin, Mahayana? Ku Chi Mie Tao. The second noble truth, they use another word, they say accumulation. No. Accumulation is suffering. They are right, they are not wrong. When you accumulate all this fear, phobia, insecurity, all your whatever uh, past uh, abuses or whatever, every time there is condition for you to recall or you see something that trigger of the memory, that negativity of mind state straight away surface. So this is how you suffer. You become unhappy. You become like panic. The phobia start again. So because this may be childhood abuses that you experience. Then sometimes university students very often uh, after they graduate work very long and they still dream they haven't passed the exam. Huh? Very often. Uh, so these are the phobia when you go through the education system. You may be a very good student of first class honors or whatever. But that thing uh, follow you or not? Because the fear of failing the exam is so intense. Uh, because you can get kicked out. Uh, then they say what? Bobina, uh, no face to face your parent or your whatever education, scholarship or loan also withdrawn. Uh. So that fear intensify you know. it's not a reality yet but the probability of it even very small created that fear you know. so that fear become a phobia over time you know you every time hold it inside your subconscious so this is how accumulation build up all this uh, negative tendency uh, phobia fear insecurity everything then sometimes panic attack and all those things. So mental problem, depression, yeah, and all the other mind-related sickness yeah, means a lot of mental suffering. They come about through lack of wisdom, attachment, clinging, grocery. But you cannot see the universal characteristics of anicham to come them. You cannot realize that this form of mind is not you, the anatta nature, not a permanent unchanging entity. But to realize emptiness is much, much more deeper than just understanding that this is not you, Sakayaditi. Sakayaditi is just self delusion, understand? Not? The initial ability to break free from that self-delusion then you don't have the ego the entity yeah, to believe that this is me this is i therefore all this can be so that delusion no more but then when you face the other first noble truth reality yeah, you still cannot act no? Like when there is separation and all those things, you still cannot act on it. To you, it's still very real, understand? Not? Your wife, your children, your parents, yeah? your loved ones, your good friend or whatever. All this like still can affect you. No? That's why to break free from all this, like I shared the other day, the fire with the Buddha already summary, in short, is due to your sakayaditi that grabs and cling onto this five aggregate of form and mind that I say took down. But to break free beyond sakayaditi, you know what Kuan Yin did? 
he went into the awareness based meditation and he threw the direct seeing illuminate into the fine aggregate of form and mind. What did Kuan Yin Bodhisattva realize? The fine aggregate of form and mind is ah, empty. Then you realize empty means what? No reality. Bo, bo ming kiyama. But doesn't mean nothingness. No. You understand? No? Empty means empty nature or existence. No? You do also like that. You don't do also like that. You understand? No? Well, everything you do, the result of it is what? Nature's law. You may accord with law of karma. Yeah? Then apply some action. But all these are phenomena within the world, understand? Coming and going, coming and going. So effectively, he know you, he know me. So who is doing anything? Everything is not the way you think. No reality that, oh, I was born. I mean, we cannot deny eh, that each and every one of us, we were born eh, to our mother's womb. Maybe some special, eh, no need to come from mother's womb, I don't know. Then, as you grow up, live life, let's say my case, eh, or your case, almost 70 years already. Eh, you cannot deny you live for 70 years, eh, and this phase of life really happened. Eh, but I ask you one question. Is there any reality? Yeah? Any reality or not? You cannot deny. You can only recall to memory that you exist. Understand? Huh? That's why I like the Mandarin song, Wang Si Zi Nen Hui Wei. Whatever is past, is past. Gone already. No more reality. Then who are you? What are you? Every moment, every phase of that 69 to 70 years, which one is you? Since the small baby until now, my face was different. When I was 30 something, different again. Then this one, everything I do, you think I share the mind, everything, it will only remain as one. Yeah? Maybe the website, exist then people read about it oh there was a brother deal yeah. well who the hell is this brother deal nobody know then after many years yeah, you think you will be remembered uh, maybe history book will write about those famous ones uh, like hitler or those things you know, the emperor and all that. but then after that that civilization may be white wall then a new civilization then what happened to all the things? Even they are around, the civilian not white off, you can only recall to memory. And I don't know. So how real can it be? Memory is what the mundane mind is. That's why it's just a phenomenal world of consciousness and form within the phenomenal world. So when you can illuminate and see this and awaken, then you realize true emptiness. Uh, in true emptiness, you realize the unconditioned number. He know you, he know me. Mo, no mark of a self-cultivating, no mark of others, no mark of life, no mark of dhamma, no mark of existence. That's why the Hat Sutta say, for noble truth also don't have. All in sickness and death doesn't exist within the through emptiness and uh, unconditioned world. So all this understanding is wisdom that can be realized when you have the awareness-based meditation to penetrate all this. So awareness can illuminate and awaken. And when you realize true emptiness, you not only not deluded by the concept of a self, psychiatry, but you can handle everything. You will not give uh, any meaning. Like I used to tell you all, there were certain 
period after 1989, I was like just walking around. And suddenly the awareness stopped. There inside there, at the nature there, the hand there. I cannot find anything. No. Like, like the egoic mind uh, totally missing. No. The entity totally missing. No. Like completely nothing. No. Then with that realization, uh, you can just understand. Uh, even now this form and mind disperse uh, or you all die. Uh, no problem. Uh. I will not have a thought to worry. Oh, my children, my wife, I haven't do my will. I haven't sought out it. Don't have such thing. Whether I exist or I don't exist, don't make a difference to what nature is. Yeah. We are all of us. You think you are real? Huh? Are you real? If you say you are real, then I ask you the next question. Since the beginning of time until now, how many rebirth or birth have you taken? Countless, isn't it? Maybe no need to say counter. One billion. Every line you count one segment, sometimes born as human, happy, deva, happy. Then when I say you born as animal, cow si lu, how you feel? Huh? Uh, the animal is you, uh, that monkey is you. Then you ask yourself, so many of these birds. The 31 plane. Eh? The other plane, not so bad. Eh? The four woeful state one are more difficult to accept. Then you ask yourself, which one is you? One billion of this bird. No? You mean all that billion you are. And who are you? All this, that's why we say, La ye kong, qi ye kong. You are born into this world, you come empty. Then you die, you pass away also empty. Well, physically, you cannot take anything away. You cannot bring anything. Then in between, why do you grieve, suffer over emptiness? So the meaning is, empty nature exists, existence agrees. Life exists. Everything that people experience, moment to moment, exists. But the reality is, all these are impermanent. They will come to pass. The moment is past, dead and gone, no more reality, finished. That's why the teaching, the Mahayana teaching, the three periods of time, they are not a reality. So, past is already gone. No more reality. Future yet to come, also no more reality. Then they realize the present moment is at least as real as it is. But how stable is the present moment? Split second is gone in there. Now I talk about it, the next moment is gone. And that is the only reality within life, existence. Then how real can life be? The only present moment which is the highest in life and the only reality in life is transient. Split second is gone, split second is gone, split second is gone. And that is the only reality in life. No? So I always teach Kayamita the contemplate and ask this question. Moment to moment, life passes by. This is the only reality. What are you doing? Uh, you ask yourself. What are you doing? Without mindfulness, you realize living beings are too busy thinking, planning, and worrying about life. Too hard. Most of the time, you think a lot. Uh, complain about life. Uh, uh, then become miserable over life. Uh, then they crave for this, crave for that, they fight, argue, conflict, everything. That's why you see war everywhere. Then the result of it is the Pancha Niyama uh, create what they call nature's disaster. Now you got uh, climatic change, you got uh, what they call pollution, <laughs> all the same. 
creating havoc for humanity because the consciousness has become so evil and just uh, so polluted and so much of these evil roots within. So when you understand all this, then your wisdom will transform you. You will not be like gullible anymore. If it's all empty, then why you want to create mental suffering and all this conflict, misery? Towards the end, there is no reality. Yeah.